One, two, three, one, two, three. Hey, Drew James here from LearnGuitarInLondon.com. I hope you're having a great day. I've got a wonderfully relaxing, romantic, classical song for you today called A Studio in E Minor. I need to do big thanks to my student, Lizzie, for introducing this to me. So this is a lovely classical song targeted at you intermediate players out there. There's one particular bar chord change in this that will really test you. Okay, see, I'll show you what I mean with that. It's something myself that I've been working and working and working out to get this performance. So for intermediate players, you can get the tab to this completely for free by joining the student area of my site. It just takes a name and email address. Just click the link in the video right now or the link in the video description at any time to grab that tab. It's a nice, short, flowing song. Let's start learning it. Okay, so let's get started on this one. To start with, it's in... 12 8 or 3 4 whatever you I'm, that always gets on my nerves that but this time where you're going one two three one two three one two three okay so that's the sort of feel that we want we want this rolling kind of romantic well ultimately sort of romanza style of guitar you know like this so that's the sort of feel we're looking for, but this is actually a little bit more advanced than that. So uh, for finger style, don't mean to insult your intelligence, but I use thumb on the top three strings, E, A, and D, index finger on, fret on G, middle finger on B, and ring finger on E, and I will reference them as such. Fret numbers one, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth as we go up the neck. So we're starting on open strings with a pinch, that means pulling two strings at the same time on the E and, well, the, the top and bottom string. Then middle finger then index finger, then find fret three on your thinnest string and go ring, middle, index, ring, middle, index. You'll already be thinking, I wish the rest of the song was as easy as this. All right, so when you've done that, leave the ring finger where it is. I'll play the next bar for you. So leave the ring there, okay? And then what you're gonna do is, I like to think of it as, it's almost like a, a D7 chord eventually. So you put your index finger on fret one on the B string, and you put your middle finger on fret two on the G string, but you don't need to lift up that ring from the previous bar. Your pinch this time is with the A string, so you've got this zero three, then middle index, then move your ring finger down to second fret, and we've got two, one, two, and then we do that again. So the picking pattern is pretty much identical throughout the whole song, right? So hopefully you're getting the hang of the picking pattern. Okay, so, so far, bar one. got perhaps the most well it is the most challenging part in the song there's no doubt about that so you're going to need to focus practice this change considerably that would be my advice to you anyway um, I certainly had to myself a lot so you're making a bar chord on fret 2 I'll be giving you tips about how to move to it faster in a minute so don't bother barring the top string you just do not need it you want your pinky on fret 5 on the thinnest string and you want your ring finger on fret 4 on the B string and we're going to pinch that same picking pattern with the A string. So we'll get two and five, four, two, and the two the bar is taken care of, right? And then the rest of the bar, we're gonna, the middle finger that's spare, we're gonna put that on fret three on the thinnest string. And we've still got our four and our two with the ring and the bar. And then you're gonna let go with the middle finger. So the four and the two is the constant, it's just the thinnest string that changes. So 
the elephant in the room on this one is how do you change effectively to that chord? Well, a little tip I've got is you make this thing first. So bar goes down first, pinky goes down. And if you've got that down, then you can pinch that whilst laying the ring finger down. Okay, so don't try to eat the burger in one bite, right? So get that down, get that down, then think about your ring. Then middle, and then lifting up. As for the tone, well, my thumb is way round the back of the neck. I'm nowhere at the top here. It's impossible to do that and do that stretch. Also, I find a classical guitar much easier for this because of the width of the neck and also just the lip for pushing up. So uh, definitely use a classical. That would be my advice anyway. So you're going to have to be focused practicing going... I'm not saying it's the easiest also to maintain the tone. Anyway, some tips there. Okay, so once we've done that bar, we're on to bar four. I like to use my pinky here on fret seven and we're holding that down and I like to put a bit of vibrato on it. So to do that, I'm just, I'm just using violin vibrato. I'm just wobbling my finger on the note. So that's bar four. Okay, bar five is the same as bar one. And bar six is the same as bar two. So we've already had this. And then bar seven is the same as bar three. So a big change. And then pinching top and bottom string for one beat. And then doing a pinch index, middle and ring on the open string. So we go one, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Then you're into the next part. Now it is important to note that on the music, there is actually a repeat symbol at the end of that bar, which takes us back to bar one. And we then play the whole thing through all the way through again. I didn't do that in my intro of the song when I played it for you, simply before time more than anything else. Um, and I, Cause I just wanted to get into teaching the lesson. Okay. So there you have it. There's actually only technically four different bars of music in that, okay? But it makes up eight bars. Well, apart from bar eight. So when you do it the second time and you get to, this is bar seven on the second page. Now we're into bar nine. So we're gonna do our usual picking pattern, open strings, pinching the top string, then fret three, then seven. Sorry. So we're open, three. Now you want to leave that seven there for this next bar. And when you get better at it, you'll be getting this index finger ready to bar fret five, never lifting up off fret seven on the thinner string to achieve this. Okay, so we're on seven. We've got a bar on the bottom three strings on fret five and we're pinching the A string with the seven. And then this gives us the fives on the tab going in middle index and let go with the ring finger. So you're all fives and picking A, B, you know the picking pattern by now and then pinky finger on fret eight. So you've got. Okay, so nine into 10. Sorry, I'm finding the job with seven today. And then bar 11, we're making a D7 chord down here. So that's index finger on fret one on the B string, middle finger on fret two on the G and ring finger on fret two on the E, pinching the D string as well. Then with your pinky finger that's spare, keep the rest of the chord held down, but block off fret two on the middle ring finger with the pinky finger on fret three and pick down. So that's ring, middle, index. So it's. And then slide your pinky up to fret five on the thinnest string. Take your ring finger, put it on fret five on the G and your index finger and put it on fret three on the B. Okay, so that change also takes a little bit of practice. D7 pinky down, slide pinky three. Now when I make that chord, I go pinky in index ring. There's a good reason for that because that's the order that I'm picking them in. If I try to eat the burger in one bite and put the whole chord down, there's a good chance of interference with these fingers. So I put it 
down in that order and pick them in the order that I put it down. It does work, that method. One day you'll just make that shape when you've practiced it enough, but that method certainly works. So here's bars 10 joining into bar 11. So we've got... Okay, so the important thing here when we get into bar 11 is if you think of it as a D7 shape, right? So a D7 is index finger on fret 1 on the B string, middle finger on fret 2 on the D, on the G, sorry, and ring finger on fret 2 on the E. Now you're going to pinch the D string, then middle finger, then index finger, then little finger is going to stretch out to fret 3 to cancel out this ring finger here. So we're doing 3, 2, 1. Then you're going to slide the little finger up to fret 5 and then play ring finger, index finger on fret 3 on the B and ring finger on fret 5 on the G. Okay, so, so that changes D7, pinky, slide pinky to 5, index ring. Now what I'm doing there is I'm putting down the fingers on that particular chord because it's a little bit tricky in the order that I play them. So I go pinky, index, ring. I just find that easier. I hope you do too. Okay, now from here, leave your pinky finger where it is on fret five and bring your ring up to fret three on the thickest string to do a G note. Pinch those two strings, then middle on open string, G. Then play fret three on the thinner string, Preferably, you want to leave this bass note held down so it's ringing throughout the bar. That's ideal. Then up to seven and do the same picking pattern. Okay, so you've got... And then you've got bar 13, which is the same as bar one. Open strings, third fret. Then this is the same as bar two. This is the same as bar three with that bar chord. Then open strings. And finally, finding the harmonics on fret 12 on the D, G, B and E strings. So just lightly touch the strings with your middle finger and then with your index, middle and ring finger, pull them hard and you'll get this high ethereal sound okay so i'm going to do bars 13 14 and 15 i'm sorry if i've gone through them a little quickly it's just that we've already covered those bars in the lesson already okay so here's 13 okay enjoy it's a great song Good workout on your bar chords, have fun.